trying to do this for like a month and nothing ever lines up so uh, we'll see how this goes I think the construction workers downstairs are on lunch break I'm pretty sure um, so hopefully they won't come back for a little while um, but I'm Claire and this is Pearlwise it's been ages since I did a, a real um, straightforward podcast uh, so I wanted to show you a lot of things so hopefully we can get through it all mm. there's some stuff that I might not get to but uh, depending when when the noise starts again there's just always noise or I don't feel good or there's not enough light why is it so hard I don't know that's just life so, um, yeah, I guess I'll get started, um, with a bunch of, a bunch of finished things. The other thing working against me is I think I'm, I think I'm sick. I'm pretty sure I'm sick. So, um, sorry if my voice sounds kind of bad. Um, there's just no perfect day. Uh, but I like to talk about knitting and I think we should do it right now So yeah first finished thing. I think I'll go in kind of chronological Order is of course. Oh wait, where are my notes one second? I'm on the floor today. I just thought it would be easier <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am happy to be here talking to you all I've, I've missed this so Thanks for being here. Um, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at pearl underscore wise. Um, and I'm not super active there, but if you follow me, I'll follow you back. And then um, I like to see what people are working on and I try to reply to stories and stuff like that. So yeah, anyways, okay. Okay, so first finished thing is this marigold tea, um, which is a pattern by Winter's Weather Knits. Um, it's hard to get all the way back to show you. Um, so it's knit out of Pearl Soho Santolina, and I think the colorway was called Heirloom White. Um, and I really like it. I think it looks really nice. I really like the fit. Uh, one of the modifications I made was that I knit it with less intended ease um, than the designer had worked into it. So. I think it's supposed to have 10 inches of positive ease and I knit the 50 inch size um, which is the fourth size and I think there are like I think 10 sizes so um, if you knit it with less ease it would be an incredibly size inclusive pattern um, I can't remember how big oh I'll just look how big is the the largest size it has a 75 inch circumference, so that's pretty good. So I knit the 50 inch um, bust, but I think it has come out a little bigger than 50 inches. I remeasured my bust the other day and it was 51, which is unusual for me. I don't know, my body has been really fluctuating this year in a way that is, um, frankly, hard to deal with. Um, so I don't know I usually have 48 to 49 inch bust when I measured the other day it was 51 I haven't measured with like a bra on um, so maybe that changes it but I have a I would say like like 
maybe three inches of positive V. So I haven't measured the, the shirt itself, but <laughs> um, it's just really soft and really nice. And the problem is that it's really pretty and I really like how it fits. So I haven't worn it because I'm scared. And I know that that's bad and I should just wear it. Um, but I just, anytime I'm like, I'm going to eat something, I'm kind of a spilly person. So I get afraid to spill on it, but I should try and move past that because I think I could wear this year round, not even just in the summer. I had initially wanted to finish this to go to Twist Fiber Festival, which my last video is a vlog, a little vlog from Twist, um, if you're interested in seeing what that festival was like. Um, but I did not finish it in time, partly because of the, const well, just the way it was constructed, and I made a mistake, um, and it was really hard to, I had to like re-knit I can't even remember exactly and I'm glad because I was really frustrated. I just had it's knit from side to side or from one side in, the other side in, and then you join in the middle. And when I got to the joining in the middle part, I realized that one of my sides, the stitch count was off. Um, and I think I... I assumed it was one side, but it was the wrong side. Anyways, I pulled out too much, more than I needed to. Um, so I ended up like re-knitting two parts of it. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> I assumed that I had messed up the second side. So I just immediately was like, ugh, and I, I frogged like the second side, like these like front and back panels. And then I realized the stitch count was actually off on the first side that I had knit. So I had to re-knit the panels on both sides, basically. Um, which actually, like, they go pretty fast once you're past, um, like this section is really the most work. And then you split for the front and the back. Um, and these sections take a lot less time, but um, it just meant that I couldn't finish it in time for twist. Um, yeah, it's a fun construction. Once you get to the middle, you graft them together, which I feel like my, uh, my Kitchener stitch is pretty seamless. Like you can see a little bump there, but I mean, it's like a cotton, it's a cotton hemp blend linen, something like that. Um, so it, it makes sense that, uh, it shows like it just shows the stitch definition a bit more so like you can see a little bit of my the difference in my knits and pearls but it doesn't it doesn't bother me um so yeah the mods I made knit it with less ease I also um, shortened it a bit um, and I'm really happy with with where it sits, like in relation to my pants. <laughs> um, and partly that was because I was worried about um, how much yarn I had. I had three skeins of the Santalina, um, which was sort of just enough to make this, uh, but it worked out. And I do, I can't remember how much I have left. It's definitely sitting around somewhere, but um, I had enough left and I would have had enough to do the collar and everything and probably that extra inch but I, I do like this this length. Um, the edge has like a you knit an I-cord edging as you go. Um, yeah so I took the inch off so if you do that you have to make sure that you take it remember to take it off the front and the back because of how it's constructed. Um, take the same amount of stitches off both sides uh, and the other mod was I didn't do uh, the ribbing like I said so uh, it's written to have like you start the sleeves with a bit of narrow ribbing um, I don't really like how that looks that like little tiny band of ribbing um, so I left it off and I thought 
you know, I could pick up later and do something else if I want to, um, like an I-cord or something, but I kind of just like the rolled, the rolled edge. Um, yeah, I think it looks nice. Um, and then as far as the collar went, I also didn't want that narrow ribbing. And so I just did a, a single crochet all the way around. And I don't remember what size crochet hook I used, probably something similar to the needle size I used. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. And it, every time I put it on, I'm like, oh, this feels nice and I should really wear it. But I did bring it with me. I went to BC for two weeks in September and I brought it with me and then I just, Every time we were going somewhere that was like nice, it was like to eat and I just got worried. Um, but I should be a little more. I mean, I can clean it if I make a mess, so. Yeah, so I think this was the first thing I finished in the last couple of months. I must have finished it in a, towards the end of August. Um, And next, I finally finished my DRK Everyday Socks, um, which I've talked about a lot because I've been working on them forever. Um, so I don't know what, what particularly to say, but uh, they're knit in M to the third Mezcla, which is... Um, and now discontinued, she's not able to carry it anymore, um, yarn. It's a, it's an, has nylon, but it is non-superwash, which is kind of what I'm, uh, wanting to look for in sock yarns right now. Um, and I haven't worn these yet, but I'm really excited to. They're really comfy. The colorway was called Mesa in the Mezcla base by Mackenzie. Um, and I did a kind of a short leg just because I tried it on and, and liked that fit. I, it's always so funny to see these DRK everyday socks um, unstretched. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really happy with them. I think they will be really comfy. Every time I put them on, I'm like, wow, this pattern fits so well. Ribbed socks fit so well. It's hard to, it's hard to imagine going back to an all stockinette sock, even if it sounds fun to knit. I'm like, but I really like the, the hug of ribbing. So yeah, I think that was what I finished next, but I don't remember. Um, DRK Everyday Socks. And we'll move the pile from left to right. Uh... The next thing, I think this was next, maybe this was before the socks, but I finished my Hollis shawl by Orlan Souk. The light, whatever, we're just going with it. Um, hard to get it all in. <laughs> so I had kind of put this aside at one point um, and I just picked it back up one day and then like finished it immediately and I was like, why do I always do that? Why do I always put things away when they're almost done? <laughs> um, so this is um, knit in Durerum Natura Ulysse, which is the sport weight. It's a pretty like open gauge. Um, and the edge uh, is some um, Briggs and Little Sport in the color Hunter Orange. That's the wrong side. Um, and my sweet friend Rudy gifted me the Hunter Orange because I had talked about it, um, specifically wanting to use this yarn in my last video and they had a skein of it, so they gave it to me, which is very sweet. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I truly have never really worn a shawl and don't know how I'll work it into my wardrobe. The construction has started again, and I hope you can't hear it, but you probably can. And I'm just 
gonna keep going, but um, yeah, I don't know how I'll wear it. I mean, it's gonna be a winter, winter situation. But I really like the, the brown um, and the orange together. I think it's really fun. And I don't think that an all over orange garment would look great on me, but I like that it's, I can have it in just this like little. Yeah, it was really fun um, pattern to knit, uh, and I would recommend it. I've made it before, um, as I probably mentioned previously. Um, I had made just like a little tiny one uh, many years ago, and I don't know where it is now, but um, this is a pretty autumnal <laughs> project. But um, I really like the, the little bits of garter against the, the lace. And I made lots of mistakes in the lace. Um, for some reason, I kept having these like dropped, like dropped stitches right at the top here. And I don't know how it would happen. So at the end, I just had to go in and I just sewed them all up. Um, yeah, lace is so much fun. Um, it was really nice to do these two, these two lace projects. I don't really know what else to say about this. I don't have um, a very good way to block a large shawl like this. You can probably tell the edge is a little bit, I just use like straight pins um, and I have like a rug on the floor here and I put a towel over it and I just pinned it into the rug on the ground, which just meant I couldn't really like sit at the couch with the coffee table while it was blocking, but it was fine. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to knit another shawl. Um, but I guess I just want to wait and see if I wear this one. Um, I have plans. Well, I had plans to sew a new winter coat that was going to be like black and green, which I think I talked about in my previous video when I was talking about what color, um, I wanted to do for the edging and but now I'm not sure of the pattern that I was going to use so it's kind of kind of up in the air at this point um but we'll see I would really like to make a new winter coat because I'm not um just like winter coats here you just have to wear them for so long and for so much of your life that it's so easy to get sick of them um, and want a change. So it would be nice to have have an, a different option. Um, yeah, so that was a Hollis shawl. Okay, we've pivoted a bit. I don't know if this will help um, with the light, but maybe a little bit. It's just hard when it's like all on one side. I feel like it's not as nice, but whatever. Okay, the next thing I finished, let's back you up a bit. I just don't want you to see my mess on the counter. <laughs> and here's my next, my next finished object is the canvas sweater by Orlan Souk. Um, I had almost entirely finished this, I think, in the spring, um, but then it started to get warm and I just wasn't really feeling it anymore. I think I had gotten to the sleeves and I was trying to do them two at a time, which for some reason I found really hard to do with this, um, with this sweater, maybe because of the texture. Usually when I do sleeves two at a time, um, they are just plain stockinette I guess um, so with like the texture and the and the cable down the sleeve it just was like kind of a handful 
Um, so I think that's why I sort of set it aside for the summer. Um, and then I recently picked it back up and finished the sleeves um, and put the neckline on, which I will say I'm not sure about the neckline. It did say I realized after I'd done it in the pattern to block the sweater first. Um, and I didn't do that before doing the neckline. Uh, I just went for it. And then once it was done, um, I felt very not sure about it. Um, and then I blocked it out and now it sits really well. I thought the sleeves felt really short at first and, and it felt tighter than I wanted. But of course, because it's cabling, um, this all like opened up and now it's like, it's just has a good amount of ease, I think. Um, I can't remember what size I made. I think it was probably supposed to have around 55-ish. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Sorry about the construction, but there's just no way to avoid it, and except maybe moving. <laughs> um, chest circumference, I think I did size five, so 50 four and a half inches of positive ease, which again, it seems like more, I don't know. Usually I get gauged, but yeah, it's got a lot, a lot of positive ease, um, and that's fine um, because I, I like the fit. Uh, this yarn, which I feel like isn't, this light is a little more direct than than when we started, but um, kind of get an idea of the yarn. It's a mystery yarn um, that my friend Kay got from a D-stash, um, and it feels similar to me to like Brooklyn Tweed or and it feels a lot like Peace Fleece I think maybe but I haven't I I looked extensively couldn't find the colorway name anywhere um so it's just a bit of a mystery but it's like a worsted weight um and yeah I wish it was showing up a little bit better it's kind of like um it's just washing out right now um, but it's a little bit more of a like deeper color than it appears on the screen at the moment. So I don't think I did any mods to this. I might even have knit the body to the recommended length. Um, yeah, I just sort of followed the pattern uh, without questioning it and um, I think it's turned out okay. So. Yeah, this collar, like when you look at the project photos or the the pattern photos, it's kind of like the, the neck is more stretched out so this sits flatter, but mine wants to sit more like that and then it does this thing. I don't know. If it, I haven't worn it yet like out in the world, so I might just wear it out a bit and then see if I can think of a way to to fix that um, but I think it's nice sorry that you can't really see it very well <laughs> um, maybe I'll put a video of me wearing it I don't want to for some reason I'm just like <laughs> I'm not wanting to take a full full body video right now so maybe not but I think I have to put the t-shirt back on because this is this is too hot. But yeah, I wish I had more to say about it. Um, but I think I'll wear it. I'm trying to imagine. I'm kind of in a pants. Just like having a pants problem where I just don't like any of my pants. I think that's part of it. I have some linen to sew some new pants, but I just, yeah, I don't know. Pants are so hard. Whew. Okay. I'm back. Sorry, I feel like this is kind of a 
frenetic episode, but I'm just out of practice. It's been months. Things are not going my way. <laughs> but it's fine. I think probably you're just here to hear about knitting, see some stuff. Uh, and so it's fine. <laughs> I shouldn't be overly critical, but I really did want to do my hair um, before this, but just curly hair, it's a whole big thing. It takes forever. Um, just my schedule wasn't aligned with <laughs> the construction workers being on lunch. So what's next? Um, okay, works in progress. This is a cute bagu bag that Rudy also gave me. Every time I go over to Rudy's house, they give me gifts and I feel like <laughs> I, I wish I could be that person who always had gifts for somebody, you know? Um, okay, so in here I have my, Rudy also gave me these stitch stoppers because they're always watching me like pull my knitting out and drop me all the stitches. <laughs> Terrible. Um, so this is my nostalgic sweater coat, which you've seen before. I can't remember how far along it was last time I showed it, but, um, this is how much I have now. Um, how many inches of body would, do we think that is? Maybe like eight or so. I think I'm trying to get to 16, so I'm maybe halfway. I was working on this a lot for a while, um, but then it just started, I, I didn't want to finish it for this fall so I could wear it, but it just started to seem really daunting. It was really big and the pearl rose, like you can see, I can't, <laughs> I can't fit it in the frame. It's hard to show off, but the pearl rows take a really long time. Just felt like it wasn't moving very fast, and so I really wanted some other things to work on. So I, ca <laughs> of course, um, cast on just like a billion other things, uh, unfortunately. So this hasn't been getting that much attention, but I was knitting on it this morning, and it's just really nice. It's knit in Newtoden. Um, two colors of Newtoden that I've had around for a while. This like dark tealy green um, and a brown, natural brown. Um, and I'll put the whoop, the names of the colors down below because um, I don't remember them off the top of my head. Um, oh, the brown was like Medvind, I think. I don't remember the green, but together they make this nice marl. Which, of course, is blowing out, but um, maybe I can mess with this in, when I'm editing. Um, again, every time I take this out, I'm like, it smells so good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just sort of, there's not much to say about this. I'm it's gonna take a while maybe it'll be done for the spring and I can wear it then um, this is probably the biggest project I've ever taken on um, <laughs> I'm doing uh, there's a lot of options for like length and shaping with this one so um, oh it's in a pattern by Albina McLaughlin sorry terrible um, I am doing the A-line shaping, so just sort of a gradual increase, um, and I'm gonna do like a mid, mid length. So that I think that she has like a cropped, or a short, a mid, and a long, um, and I'd kind of like it to just be like, just over my butt, I guess, maybe a bit longer. Um, yeah, so that's this. You'll probably, I mean, maybe I won't show it every time <laughs> because. Uh, I'm just adding, adding inches. You do the button band as you go. Um, I don't know if I'll add pockets. Maybe. It has, it'll be belted. Um, and then 
there's instructions for pockets too. Maybe, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll see how I feel when it's done. Um, cause that all happens at the end. So yeah, that's that. Um, you can see these are my, I've started increasing down the side. So just marking my increases. <laughs> I literally can't stop. Oh no, I keep breaking my new to den. I just, another thing that was slowing me down was that I had to, I've been pre-winding these balls and um, as if you've been here a while, I've probably mentioned that I had a really bad moth problem and the moths were in the Nutidin. They liked, they liked the Nutidin a lot, probably because it smells so good. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just kind of a chore to wind them up um, because uh, there's so many breaks and I have to, I just like felt them back together, but um, with my hands, like, oops, can I do it now for you? Um, I just take the strand and go like this. Helps if you're constantly a little bit sweaty like me. Um, and also I like, I like to do it um, kind of carefully because they're like them all the moths are dead but it's just can be a little bit like there's some eggs and stuff still left in there so it's I'm kind of cleaning it as I wind it um yeah um so that's that not too much to say it's gonna outgrow this bag soon probably <laughs> And then I guess it'll have to live. This is my other big, my biggest <laughs> project bag that has nothing in it right now. So it's just a crocheted bag I made. Um, so I guess it'll move into here soon. What's next? Okay. Um, then we, s I wanna show you this. It's another bag of bag that Rudy gave me. I'll show you this briefly. Um, what's in here? Oh, stitch markers. Um, this is what I worked on while I was in BC. I started uh, another rib lace raglan. Um, my last one was off gauge. Um, the orange one that I made was off gauge and I wanted one that was more two gauge. Um, but I'm not totally, I did all of this pretty much in the two weeks I was in BC. I think maybe I'd started it a little bit, but um, I had, I had ordered two skeins of Santolina specifically to make this. Um, but I wasn't really thinking about how cropped the, like, the pattern is written to be really cropped. And you can make my size, whatever size I picked, to have a couple inches of ease. Um, you can make it with two skeins of the Santolina, but it's really, really cropped. Like, like kind of just under my boobs. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> it's like several inches shorter than this that I'm wearing. Um, yeah, and I didn't really think about that when I planned to do this. And now I just did it and I finished the body to like the length written in the pattern. And I tried it on and I was like, Ugh, I don't like it. So I just put it away. Um, and maybe I'll come back to it eventually, although I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe someday I'll rip it out and make like a tank top instead, something that needs less yarn. Yeah, I don't know. That was kind of disappointing. I feel like I was having some like, a bunch of disappointments in a row with knitting. I got really frustrated a few weeks back. Um, just felt like nothing was turning out how I wanted it to. Um, and that was one of the things 
the canvas when I wasn't sure about it was one of the things which now I feel fine about that but I don't know I guess it's normal to go through phases of feeling frustrated um, but yeah so it's not really a fail or anything it's just I mean maybe I could finish it and gift it to somebody that would be a nice thing somebody slightly smaller than me I don't know we'll see um what next maybe this so yeah when I was having that period of like frustration um and dissatisfaction with everything I started trying to plan some new projects and I have I think I have maybe like four sweater quantities that I own but just none of them were what I was wanting to do I was really like for some reason wanted to knit a circular yoke sweater I don't know I don't know why it just is like I was like that is the shape that I want to knit um so I spent a long time like looking through my favorites and looking at what I have and trying to decide and I picked some things out and then there also happened to be some sales um and yeah I planned out some projects and ordered a bunch of yarn of course um and in the end I'm, I'm really happy with what I bought um and I'll show you some of it a bit in a moment but um while I was waiting for that I cast on this uh project which I've been meaning to do for a really long time um and so of course once the yarn arrived I haven't touched this but I worked on this a lot for a little while um I've talked about it before it's the pattern ooh, um is called the pattern's called uh butterflies flying out of your stash box and it's by Ari Eri Shimizu um, and it's just like kind of a riff on all these garter triangle like elongated triangle shawls that have been coming out um, but it has this like beautiful butterfly cable throughout you can see I've started another butterfly up here um, <laughs> and uh, and this nice cable along the edge um, and I'm knitting it out of uh, yarn that I picked up in Nova Scotia this past May um, from Gaspro Valley Fibers. Uh, they carry this um, yarn that is sort of local to them. I, th I can't remember how far away it is, but um, Hawthorne Hill Farms uh, and the sheep's name is Ewan and that's Ewan in the corner <laughs> um yeah and it's just a lovely like natural natural brown I have two skeins of this um yeah so I don't know how long I'll be able to make this I think I'm gonna try and get 50% of this knit and then see how it looks and maybe maybe I'll just do one skein I don't know we'll see um, but yeah, I haven't picked this up since, uh, <laughs> since my new yarn arrived, so. I just think there's a lot of thick and thin, um, but it's just got like the most beautiful shades of brown. Yeah, so that was really nice to work on. Um... And I'm glad it's here for when I need it next. The pattern's pretty easy to follow. It's charted, but I think also written out if that's something that you prefer. Um, and this is in a... I am keeping this in a bag that my shower curtain came in. <laughs> okay, and next, one of the sweater quantities that I bought last or I guess it was this month um that I found on sale was a sweater quantity of loft by Brooklyn Tweed um I've knit with shelter before I made my 
Grass Whispers beanie in Broken Tweed Shelter and I really liked knitting with it and I've always loved this colorway um, which I thought wouldn't really work for the Grass Whispers but um, I've always wanted to use it for something else and it's the Caraway colorway um, and I found this or Rudy found this I'm just gonna keep talking about Rudy um, Rudy had found this on sale um, from a yarn store in Quebec called Montrico, like M-O-N-T, um, like a mountain, and it was 30% off, which 30% off Brooklyn Tweed is still really expensive, <laughs> so unfortunately um, it's still not a super affordable yarn even at 30% off. I think it was, for the sweater quantity, um, I got eight of these, which was so fun to hold. <laughs> um, and it was, I think, 172 Canadian. So, I don't know. That's the most accessible, probably, <laughs> it'll ever be to me. Um, and I knew that I would like to make a sweater with it, so I just went for it. Um, a bit of a treat. I mean... But also, like, it's my clothes. It's what I wear every day. Uh, it's not unreasonable um, to invest in that. And the sweater that I am knitting, um, which I've kind of admired for a long time and for some reason resisted. Um, and it looks kind of like a mess right now. I took it half off the needles so I could try it on but it's um the wool and honey by Andrea Maori um so it's got some embroidery floss in it uh this is almost the complete yoke um I have one more honeycomb to go and it looks so pretty so as you can see it's not <laughs> a complete circle um I decided it's a garter stitch sweater um, and I have decided to knit it back and forth instead of in the round so it should normally um, it would be like knit one row purl one row uh, in the round but I um, I don't mind purling but I just I have that other project like the nostalgic sweater coat where I'm going back and forth. Um, and I just really like knitting garter um, flat. Uh, and that's kind of, I just thought it'd be more fun this way. And I looked through a lot of projects on Ravelry and nobody was really explaining how they did it at all. A bunch of people uh, mentioned splitting and knitting back and forth once they got to the body or on the sleeves, but never the, um, never the yoke but I just sort of read through the pattern until I understood it and then I realized I could just I just didn't connect it and I it's meant I have made some errors in like the increase sections um, because I confused myself uh, but all in all I think it's going fine and all I did was I added um, one stitch to each side to act as a selvage and then I will mattress sti stitch the whole back up when I'm done. So I guess I can try it on for you. The other issue with this is that I had a lot of trouble getting gauge. <laughs> um, so I think it's okay now but um, we'll see. It is I think gonna be have a a lot of positive ease. Oh my god, I'm tangled. Um, and be a pretty like wide. As you can see, it's doing like <laughs> this, but yeah, it's gonna be a pretty like roomy, uh, which is good, I think. Um, so yeah, I did have a moment the other day where I was like, I could make it a cardigan. And I wouldn't even have to decide like till the end if I wanted to make it a cardigan, but I don't know if that depends on how the fit is, I think, if I would like it as a cardigan. And it wouldn't be symmetrical, as you can see. Um, yeah, 
And the only other mod I've made so far, other than knitting it back and forth, <laughs> this is ridiculous, um, is that I left the collar off. I was reading through projects and a lot of people said they found the collar really tight um, and I didn't want a too tight of a collar. Um, so, I mean, I th it's kind of, I prefer to knit sweaters without the collar and then to add it later. I think maybe just because I've knit so many of Orlan Souks patterns, um, it just, this is so funny, it looks like some sort of like armor, like, <laughs> um, yeah, I just prefer that way of working. And then you have more control over what the collar is. Will, will how it will fit after the fact and you can see how the garment falls and stuff like that so um I left off the collar and the short rows I didn't do the short rows either um and we'll see what how I end up doing that some people on Ravelry seem to prefer I saw a couple projects where people did the short rows in ribbing um, because the original pattern, they're they're in garter, so it's like plain garter, and then you go into the the hexagons. Um, I that doesn't really bother me though. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, oh right, I was talking about how I struggled with gauge. I am, as I've said many times, a very loose knitter. Um, I was really hoping, the pattern is written, she recommends 3.5 millimeter needles, um, and I knew that that would be too, that wouldn't work for me. I was hoping I could do it on 2.75 millimeter needles, um, because that is the smallest size in my Chowgu set. Like, it's the smallest Chowgu small needle. Um, and then after that, it's like the mini needles. Um, but 2.75 was too big. And so I am knitting it on 2.5 millimeter needles, which kind of sucks. Um, and it's not that I mind knitting with a small needle. It's just that the small needles that I have, I just don't like that much. Like I have, I started with these Chowgu minis. Um... But they're the, like, the mini cable is, like, really floppy, which is fine, but when I bought these, I bought the four-inch tips, and the way that I knit, I kind of put, like, pressure here, and I've broken, I've broken the cables before, um, and you can see this one is, like, pretty significantly bent, and I think it might break eventually. I don't know, we'll see, but, um, and the other thing is, at this gauge I found I was like pushing a lot with my finger, and these are really sharp, um, and it was just like not fun, it just felt like a prickly <laughs> knitting experience. So I've been wanting to try some new needles anyways, um, after I made the Marit cardigan, that was, I've, I've been meaning to show you guys that and go through like what I differently what went wrong um but I just haven't had the motivation to do it but um after doing that I was like I need to try some different kinds of needles because that was also knit on like Chowgu minis um so I finally ordered um some Luka needles um and for some reason I just like I really wanted the blush, like the pink ones. Um, and I think they look so good, like with this yarn. Um, yeah, so it's been fun to knit on these. Part of the reason I wanted to try wooden needles was that I thought, um, I've heard that knitting on wood will tighten up your gauge because it's a little less like slippery. Um, but I'm knitting with the same size. This is a 2.5 millimeter um fixed look uh, circular so yeah it didn't make a difference but 
Maybe in color work it would, I don't know. I also, at the same time as I, here, I'll get it actually to show you. Um, as well as the Luka needles, well, I only ordered this set for now, the 2.5 millimeter, but I think in future for really small, um, like when I'm using these small needle sizes, I think I'm gonna order some more um, of these. I know they go down to two millimeter. The only concern I have is like breaking the needle itself, which is not, yeah. I haven't broken it yet, but um, they're only like, I think they're $11 or something, maybe 12 for this like 40 inch circular. So it's not awful if it needs to get re replaced. Um, but I also wanted to try uh, the Lantern Moon needles. Um, I ordered those at the same time and then I swatched with the Loft. Um, I got this in a three millimeter because that's the smallest that Lantern Moon do. Um, in their interchangeables. I think also in their fixed circulars. Um, so I swatched with it and it it seemed like it, for some reason, this three millimeter was making me knit a bit tighter than the 2.75 Chow Goose. But then this Luka, um, I was knitting at the same gauge as 2.5 millimeter Chow Goose. So I don't know, it's... <laughs> it's not a science um so yeah it was nice to try these I don't know I'm kind of glad that I didn't love them um but this was a, a particular project to try them on but um I'm just glad that I'm not like immediately in love and don't want to buy a set right away but uh they have this like the one thing I didn't because I was just swatching, I didn't really have like a big project on here, so I feel like the, the swivel cord that they have, I didn't really get to try that um, because it wasn't enough fabric to like make that useful. Um, but yeah, I also didn't like the join um, here, like you can kind of hear there's a big, because of the swivel cord, I was finding my stitches of my swatch were getting caught on this. So yeah, that wasn't um, as great as I was hoping they would be. I was hoping that I could knit the same gauge, I could knit this gauge on three millimeter needles if they were wooden, um, but that's not the case. So yeah, I think I will, I mean, I'll keep these around and I'm sure I'll find um, a project to use them on because I knit on three millimeter needles pretty often. Um, uh, yeah, but I think in future and for future like big all over color work projects like the Merit, which I something I'm hoping to do, um, I might get a few more sizes of these. Um, I don't know, it's just so fun that they're pink. I'm not even like really a, a pink girl, but I just really like them. And I was, I just didn't want any of the other colors for some reason. I was just waiting and waiting for the blush to be available so I could try them. So yeah, that's the Wool and Honey. It's going um a lot quicker than I thought it would for some reason. I just have been really focused on it and haven't uh, haven't wanted to touch much else. Um, yeah, this is a couple weeks of work, I guess. On a fingering weight sweater is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit worried about how I messed up the rate of increases in these increase, like in these sections. Um, but I think I'll be. I just like confused myself with like the direction of the chart because I'm going back and forth. Anyways, probably more trouble to explain than it's worth. Um, 
Yeah, okay, it's been an hour. <laughs> I'm looking at that one thing, wondering if I should talk about it, but I will. Um, my last thing that I am kind of working on, but not really, um, is a colorwork sock. Um, I'll put a picture here of the, the pattern. It's the Halloween socks, or Haunted House Socks by Natalie Sheldon. Um, which is so fun um, and I'm really excited about it but I just keep it's a colorwork sock I'm not used to it I had this problem with the only other pair of colorwork socks that I have ever knit which is that I can't get like I can't get the gauge right it's either too big and would be unwearable or it's too small can't get it over my heel so this is what I have right now but um, it's too big so I have to restart and honestly I've restarted these <laughs> four four times now just sometimes I get I think in a bad place and I get obsessive and I can't get far enough away from a project to figure out what it actually needs um, and I think when I get frustrated like that I'm sure I've talked about this before but I just need to stop um, and sorry, the construction is loud again, but um, I wasn't stopping. I was just pushing, pushing forward. Um, yeah, so I first started them. This maybe is like a boring story, but at first I tried to do a 68 stitch, the 68 stitch chart um, on a 2.25 milliliter, milliliter, millimeter, um, neat like chowgu shorty like the fixed shorty um and that was way too tight wouldn't go over my foot so i switched to the 76 stitch chart which is this one um which i actually like prefer the chart because it's got uh it's got like broken windows in between the two houses instead of stripes um I did that and I also went up to a 2.5 millimeter needle, but I used, instead of the fixed, I used these interchangeable little tiny short ones. Um, and this is, yeah, so I did 2.5 millimeter 76 stitches with this and it was way too big. So then I pulled it back and I did 76 stitches with 2.25 millimeter and it was still way too big um, and then I started again with two millimeter and it's still way too big and I think it's just the difference like the fixed nine inch circular has a much shorter tip like I think these are three inch tips and those are maybe two inch tips Anyways, just the way that I hold it is different enough that I'm knitting so much looser with this kind of needle than with the Chagu Shorty fixed. Anyways, it's just a night it's just a nightmare. And I was trying to <laughs> I mean it's not really that bad in the grand scheme of things, but um I was trying to participate in Mackenzie of M to the Thirds Socktober Cal on her Discord, and I just, I'm just sad. I just want to be like a fun <laughs> a Halloween girl, but I can't do it. I'm just not. I'm just like a neurotic, um, I think I'm a neurotic Christmas girl and not a fun Halloween girl, you know? I think I just need to accept that about myself. Um, on Mackenzie's Discord, I watched uh, The Witch the other night with Mackenzie and Kate, who's full hands um, on Instagram. And, uh, well, it just got very bright. Um, anyways, I was like talking about how I wish I was a Halloween girl, but I'm in fact a Christmas girl, and Kate said she was too, so. Um, yeah, that's what it is. I just can't be a chill, fun Halloween girl. Um, But I thought this, my mom gave me this little uh, bag and I thought it was perfect for colorwork socks because the two balls just fit right in there. Um, 
It was supposed to, I think this was supposed to be a Christmas gift, but I, I found it by accident, so uh, I got to have it early, but it's just nice. It's got kind of Halloween-y. Um, and the yarn that I'm using for these is um, something else I got on sale. Uh, it's the John Arben Exmoor Sock, um, which I thought, I got it because I thought it was non-superwash, but uh, it does have, it's got 60% Exmoor Blueface, which is superwash, 20% Coriadale, which is superwash, 10% Zorpals, not superwash, and 10% Nylon. So it is superwash, so maybe it'll stretch out if I go back down. I do want to keep going on these. I just want to be a fun person who can do colorwork socks without having a mental breakdown, but I can't be that person. Um, oh yeah, and the colors are, it's like almost wiped off, but um, <laughs> Bibblebug and Bell Heather. Um, I think this is Bibblebug and this is Bell Heather. I just love John Arbin. Yarn names. So yeah, that's like a sad a tale of woe in the form of socks. Um, but eventually I will, I just really like that pattern. I think it's really fun. I haven't seen I was like looking specifically for Halloween socks and I hadn't seen anything I liked that much um uh my foot's asleep but yeah so I recommend that pattern it's really nice there's a chart for all the different um sizes so um different charts but they're not like wildly different it's not uh they're all really nice so yeah knit the haunted house socks and then send me a picture on Instagram because I want to see. Uh, I will say on the subject of John Arbin, um, the only yarn I bought when I was in BC uh, was a skein of John Arbin yarn that I've wanted to try forever. Um, I went to Wet Coast Wools with my sister um, and I got this skein of Appledore DK uh, in the colorway Quench and it's so pretty and I think I have a plan for it um, I mean I've always thought I wanted to knit a sweater out of this but then I was holding it and my sister Mary said it's like the same color as your skin, uh, which is very true. Um, it's just so pretty. Yeah, and all of the Appledore um, DK colorways are named after like heritage apple breeds. Um, and I love apples. I was listening to, I don't know if you ever <laughs> listened to the podcast Ologies um, with Ali Ward uh, but I was listening to that today and it was a new episode about apples so sorry that I'm doing this um, but yeah I think maybe this would make a really nice pair of mittens so we'll see that was one thing I picked up um, I'd never been to wet coast wools before it was nice I had lots of um, fun stuff like some uh, Wool Dreamers, their new, what's it called? I forget what it's called, but uh, it starts with an M. And I almost bought some of that. It's like, a, I think it's a Merino. Um, yeah, spun, spun yarn. Um, Molto? No. Moto? Um, whatever who cares <laughs> it's too bright now let's swivel um I just have one last thing to talk about um and then I think we can wrap it up since there's construction and the sun and I hope this wasn't too crazy but um I just wanted to say that uh unit Toronto reached out to me they have a new pattern that came out um just last week called the Meridienne put a picture of here 
Um, it's a dress pattern with a really nice textured yoke and like this waffle knit um, like skirt section um, and it's really lovely and I really like it so uh, it was really sweet they reached out to me they gifted me the pattern um, which I'm thinking about my sweater quantities and I don't think I have any big enough for a dress for me um, but they also offered me a coupon code for you guys uh, if you want to get the pattern uh, for the Meridian um, for 50% off so the code is pearl Meridian I'll put it right here it's a pattern by Cla Claudia Quintanilla um, and they have I think a sweater version too that came out previously but um, the dress is really lovely of course, knitting a dress feels like very intimidating to me for my size, but um, I think it's probably one of those things you have to do eventually. <laughs> Once you have too many sweaters, you have to start knitting dresses. Um, so yeah, that code will be active until Friday. So the this Friday, the 27th um, of October. Let me just double check. Yeah, the 27th at midnight. Um, that code will be good for 50% off the Meridian pattern. So I hope that's something you're excited about. Um, I just thought it was really sweet of them to reach out to me. And uh, I'm sure that some of you were probably interested in that pattern. So yeah, thanks to Unit Toronto. I've never actually been there. Um, <laughs> uh, but I have a friend who lives in Toronto, I think nearby to the store and she's gone by before and said it looked really fun um she's not a knitter but she said that that when i go to visit we should go together um so i'm hoping someday i can do that i haven't been to toronto in a long time um and i would like to go sometime in the next couple months so yeah thanks for watching sorry about the lighting and the noise and the disorganization but I hope it was I hope it was fun to watch um I hope you're doing well let me know what you're knitting I hope uh you're having a lovely fall um the the trees here are looking incredible um really bright shades of red and orange um I have a maple tree right outside my window so it's kind of like half red, half green right now, which is strange. I remember last year at Thanksgiving, um, Canadian Thanksgiving, it was like fully red. Um, I know it, I don't know what the science of the, <laughs> the leaves changing is, but um, I think it has something to do with the, the temperature and the rate at which it changes and what how bright it is and stuff like that, so. It has been a very bright, bright year though, um, for the leaf color. Anyways, um, I'm gonna go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and hopefully it won't be three months till I get back to you again. But who knows, that's life. <laughs> okay, <laughs> happy knitting, bye.